Mason. Well, it's always a pleasure, actually, to follow Ivan McKee, because he's somebody on the SNP benches that I actually have an enormous respect for, and I say that sincerely. He is someone who has led organisations, who has led and managed businesses. So when he talks about culture and transformation, I think it's worthwhile that everyone in the chamber, especially the front bench for the government, listen to what he is saying. Um, I wanted to intervene on my colleague Sandesh Gulhani. I didn't realise there'd be so much time for the debate. Um, when, when my intervention uh, wasn't possible. But the point I wanted to make with him, the, the Greens today, Patrick Harvey today, is claiming credit for the widening tax gap between Scotland and England. There you go. So there's the SNP for you in this government. The Greens are claiming the credit uh, for that particular piece of nonsense. And I agree with Michael Mara. This is a government that has absolutely no appetite, absolutely no appetite for, for reform of any kind. Because uh, there can be no doubt that um, there is a serious need for reform in the Scottish public sector. But we are stuck, however, with this SNP Green Government that's never going to tackle the big issues because they just, just don't have the appetite for it. And the people who know this better than anyone else are the people that work in our public services. They come to their work every day frustrated by the stress of delivery failures that make their lives and the lives of the people that they serve worse. Now, Willie Rennie, I thought, was untypically, uh, in his speech, uh, he, he, he went after the government on the record, but, but I thought he was too generous. Uh, because the fact is that the, this uh, set of ministers, they, they lack the competence to deal with serious reform. And he didn't mention competence. They just can't do it. They haven't got it in them. It's all just too hard for this group of ministers. And, 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 and this is why so many of our public services, from the councils to the NHS, have, have turned inwards, because now they're obsessed by how things are done, by a great morass of covering, uh, corporate governance. It's all about covering backs and finding new ways to refuse to do things. They've become obsessed with reputational protection and indeed PR. And this is the product of the mismanagement, the lack of leadership of the last 17 years by this SNP Green Government which has compounded the decline of our public services that frankly started under Labour and the Liberal Democrat coalition of 20 years ago. And it's also why we've ended up with so much secrecy. Organisations have lost their candour. And nowhere is that more evident than the area of whistleblowing. Now, I want to make a, some serious remarks about whistleblowing because it's something I think as a parliament we should take a lot more seriously. Because in March last year, we observed Whistleblower Awareness Week. We had a meeting in Parliament attended by parliamentarians from every party bar one, including members who are present in the chamber this afternoon. And we listened together to whistleblowers tell their stories, public sector whistleblowers tell their stories. And it was a traumatic experience for those telling the stories, but also for all of us listening. It was raw, it was authentic, and it was distressing. Uh, presiding officer, Whistleblowing is a public good. We should hold those who whistleblow in high esteem. They are actually heroes who uphold the public good. But too often, management sees them as some sort of an affront to the organisation and its reputation. They deal with the whistleblower as a problem to be solved, rather than addressing the issue that the whistleblower has raised. HR procedures and legal devices are thrown at the whistleblower because they had the temerity in the first place to raise their hand and point out a genuine concern. And there are many examples of mistreatment of whistleblowers in the Scottish public sector services. Nobody in this parliament should assume a superior attitude about the treatment of whistleblowers in any branch of Scotland's public services. In NHS Scotland, there are cases of grotesque victimisation, the, the misuse of executive authority. We have health boards where we know there have been widespread cases of bullying. In one health board, senior clinicians have retired and left the service because they felt they were asked to do things that were unethical, being subject to what some called emotional blackmail, which caused them in turn to suffer extreme mental stress. In one case, that I am aware of, a senior clinician took his own life. Such was the horrendous experience that he was enduring. In Police Scotland, there have been outrageous examples of misogyny 
in the way that women police officers, highly professional, accomplished women, have been dealt with by the senior officers. Police officers have been bullied because they raise concerns about their safety and the inappropriate behaviour of other officers. The culture in our education system also leaves a lot to be desired. I can't tell you how many teachers I have spoken to who have said they fear speaking up about what is really happening in the classrooms of our country because they then feel that their careers will effectively be ended. They get marked out as troublemakers. And when they raise concerns about what is happening in the schools in terms of school discipline, their ability as teachers is questioned. When they do speak out, their comments are ignored, deliberately struck out or withheld from the minutes of meetings. They become marked. It is career inhibiting, if not career ending. And this is but the tip of the iceberg. People who have come forward to serve in the NHS, in, in the police, or in our schools deserve our respect and they deserve our support. They need to know that this parliament has their interests at heart. Those who come forward with issues should be thanked and listened to, not sidelined and mistreated. They should not be threatened with legal sanction, harassed or blackmailed for their efforts. And members of this parliament will know, they will have been told and they will have seen that far too many people, for far too many people in our public services, this is their experience. We owe it to the people who work in public service to have an honest conversation about the culture that they experience in the workplace. And that, I think, is in large measure, I took from Ivan McKee's speech. Culture is where we need to start. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. You might want to change things with strategic ideas, with visions, with objectives, but if the culture is not right, none of that progress will be realised. And we owe it to the taxpayers of this country who feel they are being shortchanged by the services that they expect to receive when they need to use them, to speak up on their behalf. It is time, presiding officer, for us to establish an independent office of the whistleblower sitting outside of any of the public services. An arm's length entity, answerable to this parliament, a safe harbour for whistleblowers, somewhere they can go in confidence and be treated with respect and have their concerns listened to and addressed as appropriate. Public service begins with a transformation of organisational culture towards a culture of transparency and candour. And that transformation begins with the creation of an environment in which every employee's opinion and concerns Mr. are not Kerr, only noted... Mr. please bring your remarks to a close. Thank I, you. I will. ...are not only noted but respected and acted upon. In conclusion, the people working in our public services know how to fix the service delivery problems that they experience every day of their working lives. What we need is transparency and accountability. Those are the values that we should be reinforcing my, thank you, through Mr. this Kerr. debate. Thank you, Mr Kerr. I've been very generous with the time, Mr Kerr. I, I have been very but, generous. But, but, thank you, Mr Kerr. No, thank you. I'm order. now going to call the next speaker. No, thank but, you very much. A point of order, Mr Kerr. I had the important uh, addition to make to my remarks. Uh, Mr that, Kerr, please resume your seat for a second. Thank you very much. Further to your point of order, I had said that I wanted you to bring your remarks to a close. You continued and continued, and then I had to intervene to effect that very result because I have to protect other speakers' speaking time as well. You had, Mr Kerr had a very generous allocation above his six minutes, and I think we've heard the general gist of Mr Kerr's points put extremely well. A further point of order, Mr Kerr. Claire, that members should refer to my register of interests because I am, the, I am the director of a, a not-for-profit company, Whistleblowers UK, and it's important that that's put on the record, and perhaps if you'd allow me to say it, it would have been done and dusted a long ago. Uh, well, that could have been said during the member's speech, but it is, now on, it is now on the record, and I think it is time to move on to the next.